Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a really cool solution that F5 has uh, that solves the issue of TLS visibility. We did another uh, Lightboard lesson on TLS visibility before, talked about the problem of it and, uh, and just the issues that it creates. And today we wanted to give you a, a solution to, uh, to solve that problem. So, uh, so to kind of give you an overview of what's going on here, uh, you have users out here, we'll call uh, external users, clients, whatever. Um, you've, got the, you've got the internet, uh, the big bad cloud, internet, whatever. And then inside, I'm going to call these external uh, entities or external users, all of that. But then inside, you may have like web applications uh, that you want people to visit. So web apps right here, we'll, uh, we'll draw a little you know, thing around that. Maybe you have a bunch of them. Um, you, also have the, you also have internal users uh, inside your network. So I'll put internal users here. All right. So the issue is you've got external users coming into your web application uh, or you have internal users maybe going out to visit websites out on the internet. Um, and today, in today's traffic, 80 plus percent of it is all encrypted. And so, uh, so you're left with a decision fundamentally with what to do with that traffic. You could either just let it be encrypted all the way across um, and not inspect it from a security perspective, or you can try to figure out a way to decrypt that traffic and then have any number of security devices take a look at that and do what they do um, so that you can take action on that traffic. So if it's malicious or whatever, then you can handle that. Um, so anyway, so a lot of people, of course, want to decrypt it so that they can take a look at the traffic because a lot of malware now is passed via encrypted traffic. And so you want to decrypt that to take a look. All right. So F5 has this security product called the SSL Orchestrator, SSLO. And essentially what this does is this acts as a device where external users could come connect to this device um, and this would be encrypted traffic right here. So I'm going to draw like a little, uh, little, um, you know, lock right there because that's encrypted. And then this SSL orchestrator would decrypt the traffic. So it's going to unlock and then it can send that traffic to any number of security devices so that it can, in, so that, you know, the traffic can be inspected and then it can re encrypt the traffic on the back end. So I'll put, you know, encrypt on this back end. So again, if you have users coming into your web applications or maybe you have internal users, so I'll put another arrow here going out, um, this SSL orchestrator device can not only view the encrypted traffic uh, and let it be inspected and all that, but it can take it the next step further and it can orchestrate all of this. So, uh, so a, few, a few things to consider when you implement this SSL orchestrator is you need to figure out what kind of topology uh, you want to implement this as. So some of the, uh, some of the available topologies are um, layer two inbound and outbound. Uh, so if that's the traffic that you want to be looking at or the, the uh, device that you may want to uh, use, then you can set up the SSL orchestrator, layer two inbound and outbound. Um, and then as well on layer three, it, it's a, uh, you can set it up as an outbound transparent proxy uh, an outbound explicit proxy or an inbound reverse proxy. So all of those different topologies uh, are available here for the SSL orchestrator. And of course, you need to look at the different protocols like layer four, you know, is it TCP, UDP or something else? Uh, what are you looking at for layer seven, HTTP, FTP, you know, whatever the layer seven protocol would be. Look at the direction of the traffic flow that you want to protect here. Um, and then you can start to make decisions on the actual topology uh, to implement um, the SSL orchestrator as. So, uh, so anyway, so, there, so there's those different topologies that you can use to, um, uh, to set this up. But then once you decide that, so let's say, for example, you want to set this up as an outbound transparent proxy. Uh, so all of your internal you know, users and all that stuff are going to have one out, you know, outward facing. Uh, so to the world, this is you're just going to look at the SSL orchestrator. It's just going to look like there's one thing. Um, so let's say you set it up as that. Uh, regardless of how you set or what you set it up, though, you you start to add different security um, services to the SSL orchestrator, and the the ones that are available are layer two, layer two inline devices. Uh, layer three inline devices, layer three inline, 
and really quick, layer two inline, this would be something like maybe a, <clears throat> maybe a sandbox uh, device, uh, that type of thing. Layer three, maybe like a next-gen firewall. Uh, we also have receive only, so receive only. And these would be um, maybe like an intrusion detection system, <clears throat> that kind of thing, where you're just going to be looking at the traffic. Um, there's also ICAP devices. Uh, so this would be maybe like a data loss prevention device, something like that. Uh, and then finally, there's HTTP web proxy. So these would be devices like Blue Coat, uh, maybe like a Cisco WSA, Squid, that kind of thing. Um, so these are designed in such a way that these are all of the different types of security <coughs> devices that you can configure on the SSL orchestrator. Um, and so it frankly doesn't really matter what, uh, what the manufacturer is of the device. Uh, you can configure it because it's going to fit into one of these overarching categories. Now, having said that, F5 has partnered together with several industry-leading uh, manufacturers on several of these types of devices uh, so that we make it a little bit easier if you're using one of these really popular devices uh, you know, in, in one of these categories. Then we can say, hey, are you using this super popular Layer 3 inline device? Then we, can, we make it a little easier to configure that specific device on the SSL orchestrator. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can configure, um, you know, frankly, any kind of device that would fit into one of these categories. Uh, so so the, the essence of what happens here then is, again, a user is going to connect into the SSL orchestrator. So this would be, say, for an inbound user coming to one of your web applications. Um, and these, the Cypher um, uh, negotiation that happens here between user and SSL orchestrator uh, can be whatever you need it to be. You can set that up on the SSL orchestrator so that the outward-facing Cypher uh, suite uh, could be, again, whatever you want it to be. So, for example, if you're concerned with perfect forward secrecy, this could be perfect forward secret uh, capable ciphers. Um, so, you know, as TLS 1.3 comes online and these are, you know, these are uh, mandated and you're concerned about that, well, then just offer up perfect forward secret ciphers on the SSL orchestrator. <clears throat> you could certainly do that on the back end too, but this could be a completely uh, separate set of ciphers. So, it's, uh, so there's a lot of cipher diversity here, so you can, you can figure out you know, what everybody needs to have configured and you can give um, you know, each device or each, uh, um, each, um, you know, each player here uh, the, the cipher suites that they need. Um, another really cool thing about having this is that these, these types of security devices that you can, can, or that you can figure on the SSL orchestrator can be scaled out. So, if you need to add more, um, you know, maybe you've got another firewall you need, want to add or more ICAP devices or whatever, you can just add those in and so you can really start to scale these out without having to reconfigure a whole bunch of stuff. Um, one of the nice things about SSL Orchestrator is it's very aware of the, uh, you know, of the, of the current uh, availability of all these devices. There's monitoring that happens from the SSL Orchestrator down to these devices. <clears throat> so let's say, again, you have some ICAP services uh, configured and you know, maybe one of the boxes, uh, you know, you have a whole bunch of them, maybe one of those goes down, that SSL orchestrator is going to know about that so it can say, hey, for that specific, you know, device on this ICAP services chain, then don't send traffic to that device. Uh, another really cool thing is that you can really start to configure this from a, uh, you know, from a, a, a traffic management perspective. So, for example, if you have um, HTTP traffic that comes through the SSL orchestrator, then maybe you want that to hit the ICAP device, um, but you don't necessarily want it to hit anything else. Or maybe you want it to hit I, ICAP and maybe a HTTP web proxy. Um, uh, it, you know, maybe you have other traffic that, regardless of what it is, you want it to hit, uh, let's say you have a, an intrusion detection system. And uh, whether it's HTTP or FTP or whatever, you want it to go to the intrusion detection system. So you can configure all that stuff. Uh, beyond that, you can also set up um, policies so that different subnets can be routed to different security devices. Or maybe you have like a uh, maybe you have like a, a finance or or you know HR VLAN or something like that. Uh, and you want that traffic to only go to certain devices or you want it to bypass other devices, you can totally do that as well. So again, it's not just, it's not just TLS visibility here that you, that you get, but it's, uh, it's really orchestration. It's the SSL orchestration here 
um, so that ultimately the traffic that comes in is going to go to the different services or the different security devices that it needs to go to, and it's not going to go through ones that it might not need to go through. So of course that increases speed, flexibility, it's much more efficient overall to do things that way. Um, and so, uh, so you can set all this up with, uh, with SSL Orchestrator. So, uh, so this is a very powerful uh, tool to use. Um, and so, uh, so again, get out there, check it out, and, and don't, just, um, you know, don't just make your TLS traffic visible, but orchestrate that traffic with the SSL Orchestrator. So, uh, so thanks for hanging in there today. I hope you've learned a couple of things about SSL orchestration. Hey, if you like this video, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.